Now we move to section uh, 2.3, that's chapter 2, section 3. And here we will talk about uh, evaluating a function and finding the domain of a function. Uh, for example, uh, in the exercises at the end of this section, number 8, it says, let g be the function defined by g of u. equal to parenthesis 3u minus 2 to the 3 half. And then it says find g of 1, g of 6, g of 11 third, and g of u plus 1. So first, g of 1. Well, all this means is in place of u, everywhere you see, like right here, in place of u, you're going to plug in 1. So this would be equal to 3 times 1 minus 2 to the 3 half, which is equal to, this would be 3. 3 minus 1 is 1, 1 to the 3 half, which is equal to, it's like cube root of, uh, I mean square root of 1 to the third, which is equal to 1. Another one, it says find g of 6, g of 6. That means in place of u now, in place of u in your original function, which is right here, in place of u, you put 6. So that would be equal to 3 times 6 minus 2, the whole thing to the 3 half power. That is 3 times 6 is 18. 18 minus 2 to the 3 half. That is equal to 16 to the 3 half, which is equal to square root of 16 to the third, which is equal to 4 to the third. Which is actually 64. Next one says, find the g of 11 third. Find the g of 11 third. Again, in our original function, in place of u, we put 11 third. Every place we have u. So this would be equal to 3 times 11 third minus 2 to the 3 half, which is equal to 3 times 11 third is 11, 11 minus 2 to the 3 half, that is equal to 9 to the 3 half, which is equal to square root of 9 to the third, which is equal to 3 to the third, which is 27. One last one here is the g of u plus 1. The g of u plus 1. Well, that means in your function, every place you see an, a u, you put u plus 1. Let's go back and look at the function again. This is the function we are talking about, this one right here. So in place of u here, we put u plus 1. So it would be equal to, equal to, parenthesis, 3 times u plus 1, minus 2 to the 3 half, which is equal to 3u 
plus 3 minus 2 to the 3 half, which is equal to 3u plus 1 to the 3 half. We cannot take it any further. That is the answer. That is problem number 8. We're going to do problem number 34, I believe that's what we had. Problem number 34 in this section also. Two point three. Okay, now problem number thirty four in section two point three is asking you to find the domain of a function. And here is the function we have. And domain of a function, it, it is asking you to what uh, what value of x would give you a real value for f of x. Now, a couple of things you would notice. In the numerator, for example, you would notice we have square root. And as you know, under the square root, we cannot have a negative number. So you say, under the square root, which is x minus 1, it has to be a positive number greater than 0. Actually, 0 would be okay because the square root of 0 is, is also 0. So, as part of the domain of this function, x has to be greater than or equal to 1. That's 1. Now, here we have a denominator. We have a denominator. This is a quotient with a denominator. And as you know, the denominator of a quotient cannot be equal to zero because then you, you would have a value divided by zero which is undefined. So what you are saying is, uh, you say x, well, let me change the color here and go back to black. So you say x plus 2 times x minus 3 okay, cannot be, we can do that, cannot be zero. Uh, you basically solve it like you solve an equation. So you say x plus 2 cannot be equal to zero, and x minus 3 cannot be equal to zero. So here would be x cannot be equal to minus 2, and x cannot be equal to 3. So on the one hand, this problem says x has to be greater than 1. So when x is greater than 1, basically this the answer here is irrelevant because that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, a, a negative number does not, uh, does not apply. H cannot be negative. And here H greater than, H cannot be equal to 3. So anything above 1 and equal to 1 except for 3 would be part of the domain of this function. That's number. 34. Let's go to another problem in this section 2.3, number 60, number 68. Again, this chapter is talking about domain of a function and evaluating a function at certain point. Number 68 says rising median age. Increased longevity and the aging of the baby boom generation, those born between 1946 and 1965, are the primary reasons for a rising median age. 
The median age in years of the U.S. population from 1900 to 2000 is approximately, or is, it is approximated by the following function. F of t, let me see, this is number 68. F of t, which is the median age, is defined as a three-piece function. One is 1.3t plus 22.9. Now this is if x or if t is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3. This function would be defined differently, specifically minus 0.7t squared plus 7.2t plus 11.5 if t is greater than 3 and less than or equal to 7. And it would be defined as 2.6t plus 9.4 if t is greater than 7, less than or equal to 10. The problem would tell you t is measured in decades with t equal to 0 corresponding to 1900. So from 1900 to 1910, 1909, t would be 0. From 1910 to 1919, t would be equal to 1, and so on and so forth. When you get to 2000, t would be equal to 10. So question number 1a says, what was the median age of the U.S. population at the beginning of 1900? Beginning of 1900, beginning of 1900 is talking about t being equal to 0. So when t is equal to 0, that means this, t is between 0 and 3. So we have to use the first function and we say, f of 0 is equal to 1.3 times 0 plus 22.9. Therefore, f of 0 is equal to 22.9. This is the median age. This is the median age in 1900, 22.9 years. What was the median age at the beginning of 1950s? 1950s, 1950s, that means t is equal to 5. t is equal to 5. Well, when t is equal to 5, t is between 3 and 7, you use the second equation. So you say that f of f of 5 is equal to minus 0 0.7 times 5 squared plus 7.2 times 5 plus 11.5. So this would be equal to minus 0.7 times 25 plus 7.2 times 5 would be 36 plus 11.5. This would be equal to um, 25 times minus 0.7 would be minus 
minus 17.5 plus 36 plus 11.5, therefore equal to 11.5 plus minus 17.5 would be 6, 6 subtracted from 36 would be 30. I hope I did that correctly. 30 years would be the median age. And another part of A says, um, at the beginning of 1990, beginning of 1990, that means T is equal to 9 now. When T is equal to 9, I go back to my original equation. When T is equal to 9, between 7 and 10, then you have to use this equation, 2.6T plus 9.4. So in this case, f of 9 would be equal to 2.6 times 9 plus 9.4. And f of 9 here would be 9.4. It would be equal to 32.8 years. All of these numbers are in years, by the way. So you can see that, yes, the median age over the, over the uh, past 100 years have gone up.